New York City. Good to see you. I missed you. You feel like singing a little bit? Maybe something like, uh, something like this. for you. See that in your music bible? Do I can get to your house? Okay, oh, you? okay, cool. I'll take that. So we're gonna we're gonna play some songs from the new album tonight, but just a few, cause I go to concerts too, and I know what you want. I'm here to give you what you want.
so much. Okay, so that song is 25 years old. So uh, we're gonna step into the time machine and get a little more present day. This next song, a little bit more. This, this song's just a couple years old. And um, you know, the first time I heard this song on the radio when it was becoming a hit, on the radio, um, I was just driving in my car and I was just flipping the dial, like you do, and landed on the station that was playing my new song. And so I listened to it because I, I don't care, I love hearing my song on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one of those people who say, oh, Jesus, you know? Um, so at the end of the song, the guy came on, the DJ guy came on and he said something like, you know, in a very DJ voice. That's brand new from Richard Marks, and next up, Lady Gaga. <laughs> and I was so happy. Because it occurred to me in that moment that I luckily do hear my songs on the radio still quite a bit, but you know, a lot of times I'll hear my song on the radio at the end, the guy will come on and say something about you know, That was Richard Marks. <laughs> it's cool, but that day I, I think I was sandwiched between some Room yeah, 5 yeah. and Lady Gaga, so it was a little... It's a song I wrote with uh, one of my best friends, who's a great singer-songwriter named Matt Scannell.
got you, Jay. All right, we're going to go back in the time machine once again. Uh, we're going to go back to 1991. Yeah. I wrote this song in the back of a tour bus. I wrote this piece of music that I really loved and I thought was, was um, different than anything I'd ever written before. And so I wanted the lyrics to be you know, really different than anything I've written before as well. And I, didn't, I knew it wasn't a love song, I knew it wasn't a party rock and roll song. And, um, and ever since I was a little kid, I've been a fan of murder mystery novels and murder mystery movies and stuff. And so I thought it would be kind of cool if I could write a story song to this piece of music. So I had an idea for my little murder mystery and I set it up. Little town in Nebraska. And I created this, this girl, this character named Mary, who uh, lives in the town. And I'm the narrator of the song, but I'm also a character in the story. I'm this weird guy that lives in the town. Kind of hanging out with this girl Mary, and one day Mary ends up dead. And of course everybody thinks I killed her because I'm the weird guy in town. And I, by the time I was done writing this song, I was sure of one thing, that it was the dumbest song ever. But I recorded it, and my record company at the time loved it, and they put it out as a single, and the song went to number one in like 14 different countries. And And starting from the time that song became a hit to literally present day, I still occasionally get people who come up to me and go, Hey, that, that song about the girl in Nebraska, is that autobiographical? And after a few years, I just started going, Uh-huh. I killed this chick in Nebraska. And I've been in hiding ever since on stages all over the world. <laughs> this is called Hazard. Yeah. 